Again, the show started late. He is half black. <laughs> it's kind of weird doing a show here without being able to drink, but I mean, give it up for at least being able to smoke somewhere. Give it up for that. <laughs> Even the ones that aren't old enough to. <laughs> the thing is, though, I'm glad that we could do it in here because in most bars you can't smoke now, which is stupid. Like, if, if anybody wants a history lesson, that's how we got started in Virginia, was smoking. I mean, you don't take something that got something started away from it. That's, that's like taking weed away from Jamaica. Or cocaine away from Whitney Houston. <laughs> Chris Brown's fist from Rihanna. <laughs> no one likes her that much. I've been doing stand-up comedy for a little while. The thing is about doing stand-up, my favorite way to come up now is sober. Give it up for coming up sober on stage. Yeah! I have pants on. <laughs> the thing is, because I've tried everything else and nothing worked. Like, I tried smoking weed before I went on stage. Forgot all my jokes. I tried doing cocaine before I went on stage. 30 minutes worth of jokes in 30 seconds. I tried doing ecstasy before I went on stage. Kind of inappropriate to tell you what I did with the mic. I didn't have that good role models growing up. I mean, I, like when I was a kid and trying to get with girls, all I was considered and thought about was getting a one night stand. Has anybody ever had a one night stand? Make some noise. Only ones that didn't make noise are probably gonna fuck it up. <laughs> the thing is, I tried to have one, but I had heard rumors that uh, if you have a one night stand, sometimes the girl doesn't believe it's a one night stand, she sticks with you, and it's the ones that didn't clap. <laughs> but the thing is, I wanted to make sure that I had a one night stand and she didn't stick around, so I developed a plan, and this is what I did. I went to the bar, and I got a girl, and we went home, and I let her go to sleep because chloroform makes you tired. <laughs> but before she wakes up, I go over to my dresser and I leave a bottle of herpes medication on it. And I figure she'd wake up and see it and freak out. And she did. She woke up and saw it. She was like, oh my God, oh my God. I was like, here she goes. And then she was like, I can't believe I took that out of my purse. <laughs> it's Fredericksburg. What do you expect? <laughs> hey. Uh, <laughs> Case in point. <laughs> the thing is though, that when, when that happens, it's because you're not in a relationship. Anybody here in a relationship, make some noise if you are. <laughs> the thing is, you ever, you ever done this? Whenever you break up, you find that the steps that you're going through to find a new relationship, kind of like what you look for a new job. Like some of you want to go out and find a job that's just right for you. Some of you want to go out and find a job that pays well. Some of you want to go out and find a job with good benefits. Some of you end up self-employed at home. <laughs> That's why they made Facebook. Uh, earlier, Troy was talking about Facebook. I don't mind it that much. I'm just glad MySpace is done. Give it up for that shit. I hated MySpace. The thing that I, I really, really hated about MySpace, the, there was just one thing that really stuck to me that bothered me. If someone had a kid, the only thing to acknowledge that they had a child was proud parent. I think they should add a couple boxes. Like, on weekends. Allegedly. She's a whore. <laughs> but the thing is, looking online for dates, it, it kind of throws me back to being a kid. And before I, I get into that, I want to go ahead and say right now, tonight, Make some noise right now for all of our people overseas. Make some noise right now. Tonight, I'm celebrating my brother coming home on leave. Y'all give it up for my brother Michael in the back. We're glad to have you back. Now it's time to make fun of you. The thing is, like, when we were growing up, we weren't, we weren't lucky enough to have one of those parents that had a hidden porn stash somewhere. We didn't. But what we did have is one of those TVs where you had the fuzzy channel. Anybody remember that as a kid? You remember like you turned it on the channel and it would come in all fuzzy and stuff? We would try to do that. We would, I mean, not together, we're not that weird. <laughs> but I would try to do that. I would sit and I would watch the fuzzy vision and all of a sudden it would happen. It would go clear enough and I would see a nipple. And I would get so excited. And then five minutes would go by and I'd be like, 
was it a woman's? <laughs> and I start questioning myself, because the problem is I was so young, whenever I saw a vagina, I didn't know it was a vagina. I thought it was an Arby's roast beef commercial. I go there every night now for some reason. And the thing is, when I, we grew up, we didn't have that much money. I mean, we didn't, and, and we may do. Anybody here ever lived or spent some time or lived now in a trailer park? Make some noise. <laughs> You're poor. <laughs> and the thing is, uh, we lived in one, and I mean, there's there's one big difference when you, you it comes to living in a trailer park at Christmas time. You can't really decorate your trailer like you would a house. Yeah. Like, what do you want to? Let's tie lights around the one step. The one issue, though, is uh, when your neighbors don't celebrate Christmas, you can't really cross over into their yard. So we had a kind of a, a weird nativity scene. Because we would have Mary, Joseph, and Jesus, followed by three pink flamingos and a pit bull. It's like a, a trailer trash yard sale that never got picked up. <laughs> and the other thing is, when you grow up poor, you don't get that many gifts. And, but we may do it with what we had. And I remember one year, it still sticks to me, my favorite toy that I got as a kid was Bop It. Does anybody ever remember Bop It? I, I, I had that and it was, it was just weird because I, I played with it all the time and one night it went missing. And yeah, I played with the toy, okay? Stress that. But it was missing. I walked by my mom's room one night when I was going to the bathroom and I heard twist it, twist it, pull it. So, she stole my boppet. I run inside, open the door, I was like, that's not a boppet. <laughs> that's where my brother came from. <laughs> but aside from Christmas, my favorite holiday period, give it up for St. Patty's Day. Happy you aren't old enough to appreciate it, I get it. The thing is though, St. Patty's Day used to be my favorite holiday up until this year because I, I, yeah, I got in a bit of trouble. Um, I don't remember what happened in the middle or how it started. I thought she was 16. But it's, it's probably your daughter. The thing is though, I do remember how it ended. Anybody from this area ever heard of Funland? I did not know it was legally possible to get a DUI on a go-kart. I don't even know how they could tell I was drunk. But they pulled my naked ass right out of the car. <laughs> How many ladies we got in the audience? Make some noise, ladies. Come on. <laughs> One more time. Ladies, clap right now. Ladies, make some noise. Now, just by clapping, I want to know how many of you ladies like having sex? <laughs> No wonder this place doesn't have alcohol. <laughs> How many ladies like having sex, but you like it rough? What? <laughs> no. Just gotta be honest, there's a dirty bitch. <laughs> the thing is that when I was in high school, I met a girl, and she told me I like it rough. And I said, what's that? And she said, well, you gotta smack me. You gotta talk dirty to me. You gotta pull my hair. And I was like, oh, we went from misdemeanor to felony. <laughs> But I wanted to give it a shot, so I did. And I really messed up. But at no point in time did she say, wait till we're having sex. <laughs> I came over to her house, I knocked on the door. She said, hey Kevin, how you doing? I'm like, I'm doing good, you dirty bitch. More or less her dad's fault, because he stopped me before I could pull her hair. <laughs> I wish they had alcohol. <laughs> The thing is, uh, I like doing stand-up comedy. It's a, it's a fun job on the side, but I gotta be honest, my, my all-time favorite job that I used to have on the side, I miss working at Hollywood Video, a movie store. Like, I miss that. Anybody miss going to movie stores? Like, I miss that we, that we had that and stuff. The only thing that I didn't like about it, I worked in one of the movie stores that had one of the adult rooms in it, and I didn't mind that that much, as I did just the awkward looks between somebody when they go in hand you the movie, and you're trying to find horses that like little people, and then it's your dad renting it. It's a fun ride home. But I, the, on the upside though, I am glad they don't serve alcohol here just because back when I used to do stand-up comedy, 
There, there's a problem with drinking when you're a guy. That uh, have you, has any, you don't have to clap, and I won't embarrass anybody. But sometimes, as a guy, if you drink too much, you have it happen to where you can't perform. <laughs> <laughs> Laughter of regret. Oh, my girl. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> the thing is, though, with a guy, can I hear one of the nicknames for it? What's one of the nicknames for a guy who can't oh, perform right. when he drinks a lot? Limp Dick. Limp Dick. See, and that happens. And it, it sucks. And it rhymes and it sucks. And I, I hate that God did that to guys. I honestly, I wish that he would do that to women. Could you imagine? Like a girl drinks too much and you take her home. Start messing around, you're like, are you serious? You can't even open? I mean, can they make a pill for that or something? And then we get to make nicknames for y'all. Hey, dude, don't take her home. She's already been drinking. What's wrong with that? She, uh, she gets terrified twat. Dude, after tequila, petrified pussy. Too much beer, dude. Claustrophobic flam. We do this forever. But uh, before I get out of here, I want to make a point. I want y'all to really make some noise for all the crazy exes you've dated in your life. The thing is about crazy exes that I really got a problem with, you can't break up with them the same. It, th there's no way to break up with an ex that, that's easy. There's, there's stalkers, there's, there's restraining orders, there's Facebook for Troy. <laughs> but the thing is, I found a way to break up with my ex with no strings attached. So this is what I did. I went to a party, and I brought her with me, and I got drunk, and she got drunk. And on purpose, I let her catch me, make it out with her best friend. On the upside, she doesn't call me anymore. On the downside, now her best friend John won't stop calling me. <laughs> Y'all enjoy the rest of the show. My name's Kevin. Thank you. Woo!